So the former Google engineer, and also a great inventor in his own right, Ray Kurzweil, thinks that humans might become immortal in just eight years. So he believes that it's the advancements that we're gonna see in genetics and robotics and nanotechnology that's gonna lead to all these breakthroughs, including little nanobots that will live in our body and just repair stuff whenever we need, like Wolverine style. And even though we don't have robots like that on the horizon yet, sophisticated machine learning and biomedical research are finding ways to extend our lives right now. So in this video, we're gonna talk about extending life. So we'll talk about everything from the doctors who believe we'll live to 150 years plus to the breakthroughs in machine intelligence that are unlocking the secrets of aging. So we'll start the video in the same place we start all of our days in the bed, sleeping. So there's some really cool artificial intelligent research that might just help you sleep better. So there's a new innovative machine learning model that can tell you about what's happening with your internal clock inside of your body. So researchers started by collecting blood samples from 24 healthy individuals, 12 men, 12 women. And these are people who slept well, they had regular sleeping schedules before the study started. Then the scientists started just messing with their sleep in different intervals to see what happened and measuring the metabolites in their blood. And then by feeding all of this data into an artificial intelligent model, the model learned to do the reverse, take a blood sample and make a guess as to what's happening with the internal body clock. So now we have a tool that can take some of your blood and figure out what's going on. And researchers imagine this is gonna to lead to personalized sleep plans, maybe meal recommendations, and other ways to avoid serious sleep problems and all based on your unique biology. So no more counting annoying sheep or drinking gross warm milk is take a simple blood test. Who wouldn't wanna do that before bed? And another way that AI is helping extend longevity is by finding new proteins, figuring out what's actually going on inside of our body. So a new study found something very interesting about the way that our body ages. So artificial intelligence showed scientists that there is a new protein, this was named menin. And it's mostly found in the hypothalamus, the part of the brain that's very sensitive, and they think that it might have a role in aging. Because there's a correlation right now that when the levels of this protein go down, down, there tends to be more inflammation in the body, which slowly erodes the brain in certain ways. So this might be somewhat of a protective protein that could be connected to brain health. But the hypothalamus is such an important part of the brain because it controls our heart rate, body temperature, and has a big influence on our mood. So the good news is that when research started injecting more menin, this brand new protein they found into mice, it started helping the mice with their age-related issues, as long as it was also paired with something else. And that's a non-essential amino acid called D-serine. Now, of course, at this point, it's only in mice, so we can't say for sure this will work in humans, but what if it could, and it might? But the age on our birth certificate might not be the age that we really are when it comes to how healthy we are. But thanks to Google Health, we now have a new way to measure age. So did you know that eyes might hold the secret to tracking how old we really are? So researchers from Google Health and Zuckerberg General Hospital, they found that by imaging with a high quality camera, the fungus, which is a part of the retina inside of the eye, they can actually track human aging in a non-invasive and affordable way. And that's because this part of the retina is full of blood vessels. So they're calling this method eye age and it actually predicts the trajectory of how somebody's going to age with 71% accuracy. Now the really small blood vessels in our eyes are some of the smallest in our body and that actually gives us clues when we have a high resolution image when they change of what's happening. So those subtle changes in the past have just been too minor for the human eye to capture. But with a high resolution image and a very powerful artificial intelligence model looking for patterns, there are things that you can correlate. Age-related diseases like macular degeneration, diabetic retinopathy, Parkinson's, and Alzheimer's. So to detect these patterns, Google Research got data from over 100,000 patients. And now this method could help billions of people with age-related diseases. Hey, make sure to keep an eye out for zombies. So have you ever heard of a zombie cell, also known as a senescent cell? So with all these trillions of cells in our body, some of them, these zombie cells, they die, but they don't go away. They stop dividing, but they kind of build up and cause problems. And how many of these zombie or senescent cells you have in your body helps give people a sense for how old your body really is. But scientists are still trying to get their head around around these cells, especially a really strange process that they go through that's called cryptic transcription. 
And only zombie cells do this, but during this weird phase, they make these weird RNA snippets from DNA. And the exact function of these weird RNA snippets is unknown. They just tend to build up for some reason. But it also doesn't seem to be random, like it's trying to do something or trying to destroy itself or help or something or signal. But others point out that it's a little too specific. Like, is it supposed to start some kind of a process to help with longevity or is it supposed to signal to something else to be cleaned up? But thanks to artificial intelligence, researchers have now pinpointed 300 150 sites on the DNA where this tends to happen only in zombie cells. And they're getting a sense for how a cell should look when it's younger because of the epigenetic changes that it makes. And by focusing in on these sites, they're getting a better sense for what a younger zombie cell versus an older zombie cell looks like and how it acts, and that's giving them clues into people's ages. And hopefully will even lead to something that can help us reverse the aging process. And look, if you're feeling old, you might just be thinking to yourself, why can't I just drink the blood of a young person? And that's because it doesn't work like that at all. Don't do that. What? So there's lots of different factors that go into the aging process, but some scientists are honing in on what it is about young versus old blood. So aging is a complicated process with lots of different things going on, but some scientists are honing in on how blood might play a role. So some scientists have found that when you take an old mouse and a younger mouse and you switch their blood, that the older one tends to have a more youthful, energetic appearance and the other one becomes a little bit older and slower. So that got scientists thinking that there might be something in the blood that's affecting age. So the jury's still totally out on this and some of the things are like not super conclusive, but there's a maybe a lead there. And on close examination of the different types of blood, they have found that a protein called CCL11 will increase as we age. And that might not be a good protein because there's some theories that that protein in itself is actually slowing down the brain's ability to adapt to new situation and make new brain cells. Now they also found a hormone called oxytocin, which you might've heard of, the feel good hormone is higher in the younger blood. Okay, so now there's a lot of people who are on the waiting list for organs. This is a big problem. And even when they get them, sometimes it just doesn't work. It's a very difficult process. But the good news is scientists are starting to use some of the most advanced artificial intelligence to make this process work better. And there's five major ways they've started influencing their success rate. So here is five specialized artificial intelligence models that the Mayo Clinic says is changing the way that doctors actually do organ transplants. So the first one is prevention. Artificial intelligence is looking at lots of different metrics around the body, trying to find out if an organ will fail before it does, hopefully preventing it from ever failing in the first place. Second, it can help you match with somebody who's a much better success rate for an organ transplant because it can look at way more variables than a human ever could. Third, it can tell doctors about the health of the organ itself. Was it actually properly removed? How healthy is it before you put it in the new person? Fourth, it can look at the recipient's body and make a higher, more accurate prediction about whether or not it's gonna be rejected. And fifth, artificial intelligence can make life easier after a transplant by thinking about the way that the medications are all working together and taking into account the way the body's actually starting to adapt to the new organ. So that might lead you to think, can artificial intelligence help me if I have very poorly performing sperm? So researchers have come up with this really cool new artificial intelligent model to help pick out the best sperm for IVF treatment. So AI helped design this 3D printed gadget that looks and works, I guess, a lot like the female reproductive system and it helps pick out the best sperm. So the cool thing is this new method seems to be way better than the old ones. It showed a huge improvement in DNA integrity and had way less sperm cell death. Plus the sperm that it chose did way better after being frozen, which is an important part of IVF. So by having a baby, you're certainly extending the life of your genetics, but as a person, what if I could add 10 more years to your life? So Sam Altman, one of the founders of OpenAI that's behind ChatGPT is really into living longer. I mean, kind of who isn't, but he put $180 million into a new startup. It's a company named Retro Biosciences. So their goal is to help people live 10 more healthy years, that's health span versus lifespan, by looking at the animal kingdom, finding out what works in nature and applying it to humans. And even though there might be some amazing secrets to longevity out there in nature that animals are using, it sounds like we might be close to having a pill for that. So there's some scientists, doctors, they say they've come up with a pill that can help extend life by 100 years, 50 years, a whole bunch of years. So Dr. Andrew Steele, the scientist and author, he's been talking about how a special class of drugs called senolytics can help us live longer by getting rid of the bad cells in our body. So a senolytic is among this very small class of molecules that might be kind of a trigger, basically a bullet that can pop a cell and then it's gone. And because a lot of cells that don't go away, even though they're dead, start to build up and they can lead to such bad aging byproducts, 
that could really make us younger. Now another doctor thinks that if we have a pill that has these things in them, we can expect to live to maybe 150 years old or so. So sometimes I'm, you know, a little skeptical of like miracle pill, but he says that the good news is they're already being tested and might be available for the public within 10 years. And if the science is there, I'll change my tune. And Dr. Steele says if these drugs work, the first person to live to 150 years is actually born right now. Smash that subscribe button for more curious future.